Well, hi, at BookTube. Bill Rutenberg here with the Rutenberg Library. Long time no see. It has been uh, several weeks since I have done a video. It's actually been, I believe, over a month since I've done a video, and I wanted to get back into it. Uh, we've we finished up our school year this last year. Things got very, very hectic and busy this last month. Um, with everything that was going on um, at school, we had had, I coached middle school track, and so the majority of our track meets are right there the last week or two of April, and then the first week to week and a half of May for our for our um, track team. And so we were doing track, trying to finish up track, and that was, honestly, that was eating up a ton of my time. I had a, a very, very good track season this year. We had... Um, our team, our, our numbers weren't huge. I think we had 17 girls out all together for our track team. And um, I, uh, they did not disappoint me. They were, they, it was a very fast team, probably the fastest team I've coached in the, I think I've been coaching six or seven years doing this. And it was, it was my fastest team I've ever had. And um, they were just an absolute, um, it, it, it was fun. It was absolutely fun to coach them. Uh, we could go into any track meet and be very, very competitive. So we finished out, off our um, track season. We started off, uh, our first meet was a big meet, and we finished third in the meet. And, uh, you know, looking back, if I'd have known exactly, you know, what kind of weapons I had, we probably could have won the meet because we didn't lose by very much. And uh, both of the teams that beat us, we later on in the next, uh, you know, in the coming meets, we actually beat them head to head. And so, um, you know, we got third in that first meet, but then the next four meets in a row, we won every one of the meets. And uh, that was that was absolutely awesome. One of those was our conference meet. One of those was our home meet, which we hadn't won. When I was looking in the trophy case, I don't think we'd won our home meet in 20 years. And so we won our our home meet, and that was really just it's a, it's a big meet. So that was a that was a thrill. And uh, again, we won four meets in a row. That was absolutely awesome. Then we went into uh, one of our meets where the girls were really wanting to try to set some team records, some school records in a couple of events. And so we kind of switched things around and uh, we weren't able to do that. We set two records uh, throughout the school year. We broke our 100 meter um uh, a uh, hundred meter hurdle record, and then we we beat our uh, distance medley, our sixteen hundred meter distance medley team. Where um, I know not all states have the medley uh, relays, but you know your first girl runs a two hundred, then the next one a two hundred, then the next one a four hundred, then the next one an eight hundred, and we beat our school record by uh, twelve seconds. And so that was an absolute thrill. And we had several other. Um, several other events where we were right there really really close to breaking our school record we just you know some little hiccup happened and we weren't able to do that but in that meet where we went after records we got third place and then we went into the very last meet of the of the year uh which is a little bit bigger meet and we faced some schools that we don't normally face and a couple of them are just they're buzz saws when it comes to track they're really really good and and uh, we got third in that meet as well. The two buzz saws beat us, and and no matter how I arranged the events and the girls and the events, I don't. There's no way we could have caught them. Um, so I was very very tickled with how our track season ended. We also had, of course, the end of the school year, which, like I said, ended last week, and uh, we had to bring all kinds of things that we were doing at school, kind of bring them to a close. And if you've never been in the classroom before, you're not a teacher, uh, you probably might not understand the pressure that we get under uh, to get things wrapped up, bring it to a conclusion, get finals tests done. And then in the middle of all of that, we've got, you know, middle school awards ceremony. We've got, uh, we're taking a field trip here. We're going to put career day here. We're going to put, uh, you know, all these little end of the year activities that, uh, sometimes you forget, you tend to forget them and then they kind of pop up on you and it has, it, it causes you to have to rearrange your whole calendar. And so, uh, anyway, we had all that going and, 
and I started umpiring at the end of May and life was just very, very busy. So I haven't done a video. I've been doing reading. I've been, I've been getting some reading done, but uh, I just haven't done a video yet, so I thought I would uh, come to you with a with a video. I might wait one more day and do a, um, I know I have a tag I want to do tomorrow, and then um, I need to do an end of May wrap up. I need to do a June on the range uh, TBR, or not TBR, but a pile of possibilities for June on the range because I collected a whole bunch of those books um, I need to talk about Historathon, which um, I kind of put on pause here these last two months because I was wrapping up stuff from the first quarter, and then I just got so busy with life I didn't even I haven't even started a second quarter book, and um, now I'm questioning myself on what if if I'm gonna start a second quarter book. I'm not sure. I might, but um, I'm not 100% sure on that. But I know I'm going to kick it in gear during third quarter for for uh, Historathon. So don't think I've bailed on that. I have not bailed. I've just gone silent. <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, I got a lot of stuff I want to talk to you about, a lot of stuff I want to share with you with the, with the library and um, just, just very excited to be back. So, uh, let's talk about stuff that I did get read, uh, this last week. So the book that I finished up, uh, just yesterday was The Sand Creek Massacre by Stan Hoig. Um, and this is a short little novel about the, basically the Indian Wars going on out in Colorado and, uh, Colorado, Nebraska, uh, maybe a little bit into Wyoming and Kansas, um, so it, it's a little bit all over the place in that region because it all led up to the event of the Sand Creek Massacre. And um, this book was a pretty good little overview of everything that was going on. I thought it was actually really nice to read alongside um, the James Mishner novel that I read, uh, Centennial, which talked about everything that was going on in this book. And I thought that was, they, they were a really good hand-in-hand -hand, uh, combo uh, I wish I would have read it a little bit closer to that time, but that was not humanly possible because I just picked this up like two weeks ago. But um, thoroughly enjoyed this. Um, I mean, it's a sad, sad moment in American history, so I don't enjoy it from that standpoint. But, um, you know, it added to my overall knowledge of what was going on uh, out in Colorado and the surrounding area dealing with the, the military and the Native Americans that were living in the area. So, um, good book. If you are, I don't, I don't know that I would recommend it to a beginner in history, but definitely something I would recommend to somebody who is familiar with the, the Indian Wars of the West. So, got that finished yesterday. And then the other books that I've been working on over the last week or two, um, I... I had started this one earlier in the year, returned it to the library because life got busy, and then I grabbed it like two days before school is out, and I've been reading on it again. Um, and it's Stephen King's Christine, and it's all about a 1958, um, oh goodness, what is, the, what is the name of the car? It's a 1958, and of course I won't remember. Um... I don't want to spend too much time looking for it, but it's a 1958 car that uh, this kid has bought, and uh, the car has almost a mind of its own, and there's an evil presence with this with this car, and it causes people to um, it, it causes them to kind of change their whole mindset on just life in general. And this boy um, is kind of an unpopular boy at school, or just at least not in the popular group. And this has allowed him to kind of focus on, you know, now he's got some wheels. He ends up getting a girlfriend. And I am not quite halfway there. I'm getting there. Um, but it's about that story of him, his car, his girlfriend, and then his best friend. And the boy's name's Arnie. And um, the best friend's name is... I am not doing good with these reviews, am I? It is um, Dennis. Yeah, his name is Dennis. And it's all about that relationship back and forth and how this car has affected that relationship and, and their lives. So um, I'll have to get back to you once I get further into it because I'm not exactly sure. I've never seen the movie, never read the book before, so I'm not exactly sure where the story is going to head. I mean, you can take some guesses on it's going to wreck 
Arnie's life. But um, yeah, have to get back to you on that one. The next one that I have been reading is Agatha Christie's The Man in the Brown Suit. And look at that cover. Isn't that awesome? Uh, it's from, This book's from Vintage Classics. I love their line of Agatha Christie books. And this book is about Anne Bedingfe Bedingfeld, who um, her father was an archaeologist. And um, she's kind of following in his footsteps a little bit. But uh, she has come upon this murder that happens. And uh, she wants to follow through and figure out who the murderer was. How did this happen? And so basically she's traveling to South Africa as the story kind of unfolds, she finds herself traveling to South Africa where her father had done some, some digging and so she's got kind of some groundwork laid with people already there and uh, she's following this maze of people as Agatha Christie likes to do. She, she throws in a lot of different characters and uh, she is following this guy to South Africa trying to figure out why somebody was murdered. <clears throat> Good book. I'm uh, you know, about halfway through that. Uh, I have been reading a biography, So Help Me God, by Mike Pence. This is something that my in-laws had, had gave me for Christmas, and um, I'm not super far into it. What am I, 87 pages in to uh, almost a 500-page book, um, but it is just to the point of they had just had 9-11, and it's talking about No Child Left Behind and Mike Pence's stance on that. So reading that, and I don't typically read, uh, you know, modern biography, or I guess that's more of a memoir, autobiography. I don't typically read those, but it was a present from my in-laws, so I have been partaking in that. And, uh, which is, it's kind of neat because, you know, that's the time period that, uh, I had entered, you know, going through, he starts back in his, uh, obviously in his childhood. And then he talks about getting into politics and in the, you know, late eighties and into the 1990s. Um, and that's when I was growing up. So it is interest is definitely interesting from that, from that point of view, from that perspective, because this is all the stuff I remember watching on TV, and now it's into, of course, the early 2000s, which is when I entered adulthood, and uh, so, you know, it's bringing back flashes of everything that was going on, so that's always kind of neat. Um, now, the next baseball book for the opening day project that I had started, <clears throat> I had planned to read a baseball book for every day or excuse me, not every day, that'd be a lot of baseball books, for every month of the baseball season. And so far, I have read March, April, May, and I am reading my second book for May, and this is uh, The Sporting News Selects Baseball's 100 Greatest Players. It's the second edition, forward by Roger Clemens. But uh, I'm thoroughly enjoying this. It's basically, if you just kind of open up, I'll just randomly open up. There's... Bill Dickey, Willie McCovey, um, you know, it's just got a two-page spread here. I'll keep it on George Brett because I'm a Kansas City Royals fan. Um, but it's got a two-page spread on each of the 100 greatest players selected by the Sporting News. And, um, you know, it's not a lot. It's a couple, three paragraphs, basically, about each player, what they meant uh, as individual players, what they meant during their time period, and then their, you know, a little bit about, you know, just the legacy that they've left behind as a ball player, and um, just really enjoying that. It's kind of an in-betweener. It's not necessarily one of my monthly uh, books that I'm going to read. It was one that my mother-in-law had picked up for me. Uh, actually, her sister picked it up at a, at a, um, uh, goodwill and had given it to her to give to me and I'm really enjoying it. It's got wonderful, wonderful photography and it's just a nice little snippet of each of these 100 greatest players lives in baseball. And of course, being a baseball fan, I absolutely love that. Uh, the next book that uh, I started earlier in the year, got sidetracked, put it down and I wanted to wait until I had time to really dig into it and enjoy it. And um, I'm about ready to pick it back up. Uh, probably we'll put it in the stack of books I'm reading for tomorrow morning. Maybe I'll read it a little bit this afternoon in the middle of my honeydew list. Uh, I got some things I got to get done around the house. We're scraping and painting the back uh, uh, 
privacy fence that we've got that I built several years ago. And so we got to get that thing repainted. It's been kind of peeling because of time. And so I got to get that done. But in between those jobs, uh, also got to get the garden going because uh, I haven't got that planted yet. But anyway, in between those jobs, I'm going to pick back up. And then there was Light, Abraham Lincoln and the American Struggle by John Meacham. Um, thoroughly uh, enjoyed when I got started. I did not get hardly, you know, I'm, what, 24 pages in. So I'm not anything to brag about. I'm not very far into it. But I enjoyed it. I always enjoy John Meacham. He's a good writer. Um, very easy to understand and follow. Um, I had led, uh, or I had led, I had let a colleague at work. She was doing a... Um, they were doing a group read and in her book club that she's in, and this was the book, and I'd, I'd let her borrow this, and uh, when I got it back, she was just um, gushing over it and how good it was and everything, so I wanted to pick this back up. So that's going to be one I'm going to start this week to go along with all the other ones that I'm reading. Um, so... Uh, with that being said, let me show you a, a handful of books that I got into the uh, library here in the last, uh, it was probably a couple weeks ago I got these. My friend uh, Paul from St. Louis uh, sent me some books, sent me a, a package of three books, and so I wanted to share those with you. He knows I like Bruce Canton, and he found this really nice copy of A Stillness at Appomattox, and uh, I like the cover. I think that's kind of neat, a little bit vintage there. And uh, he got that for me. We'll go along nice with the with the collection. Of course, this is a uh, nineteen. Let's see, what year is this copy? Turn the page again. Nineteen seventy two. This copy is nineteen seventy two. Um, it's a, it's an older book. 1953, I believe, is the original publishing date. But um, if you've never, if you're a Civil War fan or you want to learn more about the Civil War, read Bruce Canton. Uh, Catton. Uh, he um, is just phenomenal when it comes to the Civil War. Now, uh, Paul knows I'm a huge baseball fan. He, he, I believe, works for the St. Louis Cardinals, and I can't recall. His, he told me, and I can't remember what, he, what his position is, but uh, he had gotten a job working for them. And he, so he sent me a couple of uh, baseball books uh, centered around the St. Louis Cardinals. And I believe these might be my next two books I read for my opening day project. The first one is uh, The Phenomenon, Rick Ankiel. Uh, Pressure, the yips, and the pitch that changed my life. Uh, I had not seen this one before, so this is a very new copy in really great shape. It is from, there we go. It is from Public Affairs out of New York, and it is a 2017 book. And like I said, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, it's got, how many pages? Let's see, 289 pages. 289 pages, so just under 300 pages long. And so I'm gonna partake in that pretty soon. I'm gonna get this other baseball book done, but that'll probably be my June opening day project. And then this other one is uh, The Pilot in the Gas House Gang by Bob Brogue. And I'm looking forward to this. It looks very, very interesting. This is an older book. There's a picture of your author. Um, this is, let's see, The Life and Laughs of Frank Frisch and Other Colorful Baseball Characters. And you can't go wrong with any of these old baseball stories. It says, one of baseball's most colorful players, Frank Frisch, comes alive in this book filled with anecdotes and fascinating personal stories about Frank Frisch and friends. <laughs> Say that 10 times fast. Frank Frisch and French. <laughs> uh, the, the book traces Frankie's career from his early days as a spark plug for the New York Giants to his days as the pilot light who ignited the old gas house gang of the St. Louis Cardinal baseball team during the 30s. Many of Frisch's contemporaries, baseball's big names, are revealed in these 18 chapters which celebrate baseball's most glorious and fun-filled days. And this comes from the Bethany Press and it's out of St. Louis, and it is 1980, it looks like, 1980. And so, you know, these are just little 
small chapters, you know, these are really good for, for um, you know, if you just have a few minutes here, a few minutes there, uh, the chapters are small enough, you can get the whole chapter done. It's only 176 uh, pages long, so this will be a pretty quick one, I believe. But uh, looking forward to that. Thank you, Paul, for sending those three books. I'm, I know I'm going to enjoy them. I have no doubt you've, you've done very, very well with all the others you've sent, and I really appreciate that. Um, the next book here is one that I picked up from the Dollar, Dollar Tree, or as I like to call it, the Dollar and a Quarter Tree, because the uh, name of their store is not correct anymore. But anyway, um, this is Nottingham. No King, No Rules by Nathan uh, McCarrick. And I wasn't familiar with the author, but the book, I, I'll be honest, at first it was a cover buy just because that cover is absolutely awesome. But this, I believe, when I was reading, is a, a twist on the, um, the story of Robin Hood. Okay? And so it says, England, 1191. King Richard is a half a world away, fighting for God and his own ambition. Back home, the country languishes, bankrupt and on the verge of anarchy. People with power are running unchecked. People without, without are growing angry. And in Nottingham, the largest and wealthiest shire in England, a dangerously passive sheriff seems intent on doing nothing. As the leaves turn gold in the, sh in sh in the Sherwood Forest, the lives of six people, arable, a servant girl with a secret, Robin and William, uh, soldiers running from their pa pasts, Marion, a noblewoman working for change, Guy of Gisborne, Gisborne uh, a beleaguered guard captain, and Elena Gamwell, a brash, ambitious thief, become intertwined, and a strange story begins to spread. And so, uh, pretty excited about that. Sounded interesting. Again, probably a cover buy to start with, but... Should be a lot of fun. And then the very last thing that I've picked up, I picked this up at Walmart the other day. My daughter wanted to go to the toy section. And of course, um, on the way to the toy section is the book section. So we always, uh, I stop at one and she, and then I take her over to the other one. And so I noticed on the shelf, the new American history magazine for this month. This is the, um, the summer 2023 edition, All Men Are Created Equal. A rare scrapbook reveals Lincoln's early views on slavery, which I don't know that that's really going to tell me, uh, you know, anything I haven't heard before, but um, it goes well with my Lincoln collection, and um, I can always use another American history magazine because I, I love their articles. But um, anyway, uh, I hope everybody's doing well. Again, I haven't, I haven't posted anything for over a month. And so I thought it was time. Maybe I should try to get a, a video uploaded. So here we are. Um, if you've read any of these books, let me know what you think. Uh, did we do okay? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing where these books I've already started, where they're headed. So um, until next time, BookTube, happy reading.